This program is brought to you by NewsWorks in cooperation with the City of Eau Claire. This program is silent. Well, good morning, all. Uh, given the time, um, Mr. DeRosa could not be here today, so I am sitting in, and we will bring this meeting to order. Um, the first item on the agenda is, or the second item, would be uh, the minutes of the meeting of June 21. Has everyone had a chance to take a look? I'd move acceptance of the minutes. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye, aye. So moved. Number three, financial statements. Good morning. Good morning. As of July 31st, 2017, uh, 2017 RDA operating expenditures total $5,617.25 due to utility and auditing expenditures. Uh, to date in 2017, capital expenditures total, um, or I'm sorry, capital expenditures totaled $6,525 in July. That's just the July expenditures. Um, this included $1,625 for asbestos removal at 1807 Oxford. Um, phase one environmental analysis at 2000 Oxford Avenue and $3,000 for conceptual design work for block seven. I will take any questions. Do we have any questions this morning? If not, thank you. Thank you. Uh, motion to approve the financial statements as presented. Second. Moved and seconded. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Item number four, review of the certified survey map and a motion to transfer outlet one from the redevelopment authority to the city of Eau Claire, parentheses, the brewing project. Well, I'll start Mike? out. Um, yes, so this is all related to uh, the closing on the brewing project. Uh, you might remember that uh, we had given an extension to September for the closing and that it uh, in related to Mr. Um, Glass getting his federal permit. So he has received that now. I don't see him in the audience, but um, so he has said he's willing to move forward. So um, Mr. Nick has been working on the uh, closing documents with several other us, of us at City Hall, uh, putting all that together and then um, sharing that with uh, Mr. Glass and his attorney. So I'll turn it over to Steve to walk us through the CSM. Sure, happy to. And I was, <clears throat> I was just putting it up, so, but if you want, oh. happy to. <laughs> You're um, there. <laughs> yep. Unless, the, Dave, unless you want Dave to, Dave's here yeah, too. Yeah, so. and, and Dave's probably the most informed on it, but this is the um, uh, draft CSM. Uh, it is not final. It doesn't have uh, signatures on it yet, but it is getting close. Uh, the key aspects for your review is that it's a three-lot CSM with the uh, center lot, lot two being the 50,000 square foot parcel uh, that is to be uh, transferred to Mr. Glass and the brewing project with a lot one and lot three created to the uh, south and north. Uh, those being uh, properties uh, and to bring to the RDA's attention larger than uh, really I think originally intended by the RDA, but part of the reason we're bringing this back for you to review. Both those are uh, identified as option uh, parcels for this out of ease uh, when this agreement was being uh, developed in years past. We didn't have a CSM as one of the challenges of it, sort of the nature of how it, how it came to us. The lots weren't developed and ready for sale. Uh, your option language indicates uh, that Mr. Glass has until the end of 2018 to purchase, and in the agreement it said more or less or plus or minus 5,000 square feet. So certainly those two lots are quite a bit more than that. They're closer to 50,000 square feet, 10 times that. But there is no definition either in the agreement or in this CSM. There's no other purpose for it to sort of try to find a line of how much uh, he could option. Um, so the, uh, the agreement that we've uh, sent over to uh, Mr. Glass's attorney to review provides an option uh, for both lots one and lots three in their entirety on the terms as you've set them out. Uh, $5 per square foot, the same price of land on lot two, and an additional $100 evaluation uh, per foot. 
uh, again, to be exercised or not on or before uh, December 31st of 2018. Uh, the other uh, key element and, and the only action item uh, really that you have on your agenda today is uh, the large outlot that deals with property not only acquired from uh, Gillette uh, family and Indian Head Foods, which is a parcel approximately in this area, but the CSM also covers uh, property behind family video uh, that was acquired as separate transaction uh, intended for use of a linear uh, park and trail system between Madison Street and uh, the High Bridge, which is off this map, and is also uh, complete completion of that trail uh, and work on that park is also uh, part of the um, a contingency in our uh, agreement with Mr. Glass. So that this outlot is is shown as part of this CSM, and it's our uh, recommendation furtherance of, of the RDA's plans for the cannery that uh, you authorize transfer of outlot one to the city uh, for park development. Happy to answer any questions or again on any of the technical layout. Um, I'm glad to see Dave back there. We have any questions? Yes. Mr. Kemp. Thank you. Thanks, Steve. Sure. Um, just two quick questions. One, the lot one, lot three. Mm -hmm. So the, is that um, right to purchase those by brewing projects that are exclusive to them? I mean, say somebody else came forward and said, you know, we really want that lot one mm -hmm. before December 31st, 2018. Is, does this agree? It isn't clear to me whether this agreement allows us to sell that to another party or, or it, it's not a deed. A kind of sorry, it's not a deed restriction that we can't market it or can't sell it. But an option means that that party has the ability to purchase. So that option would need to be uh, terminated if we would attempt to sell it to any other party previously. Uh, so it, uh, if the RDA is in place, you know, in a position to start marketing any of those before the end of next year, uh, then we'd have to work with Mr. Glass to. Uh, again, terminate that option, right? Otherwise, in essence, he, he's got control over the potential of, of moving into those parcels through the end of next year. Okay. I, I suppose you would have said already, this is a follow-up to that. Is there any staff concern about that? You're that. that go ahead, Mike. No. I, I mean, I think that's something that we had um, worked out through the long protracted negotiations and so we're uh, we're thinking that's that's the way it's going to be if somebody does come forward though and says that's really the spot I want I'm sure we can open up discussions with Mr. Glass to see if his intentions are to uh, buy it or not and depending on who it is maybe he'd find it a good mix so uh, but we were uh, prepared to live with the December 31st 2018 unless somebody steps forward um, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Sec second to last question I have is you mentioned in your presentation about one, which is the park development area. Um, maybe it sounded like maybe there have been some plan changes there. I mean, that, that shape is different, a little different than what we discussed in the past. Um, but there's, in terms of like the broader development plan, we're still sort of on track with the presentation that we saw, I believe, in January. Mm -hmm. sort of the, yes. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Thanks. No more questions. Anybody else? So really the only action is the transferring of outlot one to the city. Correct. Mm -hmm. And if I could just quickly uh, respond to Dr. Kemp, uh, this CSM uh, in terms of outlot one is now informed by uh, more specific uh, designs of the trail location. Uh, so it does, it does follow uh, kind of a curvilinear uh, trail location fairly uh, closely, I think, you know, with some uh, offset. But uh, it is it is consistent with, with the plans for this southern portion. So, again, you know, you're only seeing the southern third, you know, quarter maybe, right. quarter to a third of, of that entire design. Right. Um, so that's where you kind of miss, you know, in this map, some of where it opens up. Um, we will be coming to you probably in September to talk about the, the further 
uh, north portion too because that's something we'll want to also transfer from the RDA to the city to, to get that going. But uh, Dave and I talked and we'll, we'll be um, bringing that forward at a next meeting. Okay. One thing uh, at the meeting I missed, uh, David asked about family video and if there's any further, because that's a j adjacent property, because I still read in a lot of the trades that uh, companies of this type are going out of business at an alarming rate across the country. Anything further with any discussions about them? Uh, attempts to talk to them direct have not um, come to fruition. Um, there was a big article that I read in the Chicago Tribune about them, and their uh, CEO was stating that um, that they are a real estate company too. So they see themselves bigger than just the family video. And when I had discussions with their um, real estate folks, um, it was, well, sh we'd be fine if you stayed a real estate development, but could you do an urban development? And they stated they didn't have experience in uh, second, third floors or with uh, urban housing. Uh, so I talked to them about aligning them with maybe some developers who could um, share their, their experience with them, um, that they could still, if this is a viable family uh, video, uh, they could be in a, a larger urban project. It, it didn't mean that they had to move or anything. There, the first few conversations went pretty well, like, oh, yeah, we're open to thinking about that. and everything. But, but as we... We pressed as we had our plans and everything. They they're not returning calls or emails. So, but I'm I'm definitely on the top of one of my top lists of things to keep at. If nothing else, thank you. Thank you, Steve. Um, I'd entertain a motion then to transfer Outlet One from the Redevelopment Authority to the City of Eau Claire. So moved. Uh, moved and seconded. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Mike, would you know that I continue to abstain? Okay. Mr. Halloran Hall abstains. Thank you. Uh, number six, review of the conceptual plans for Block 7 in the North Barstow Redevelopment District. Michael? All right. We have Mr. Snow here from SDS. Um, Mr. Peters and I continued to uh, work with SDS to tweak some of the plans they showed you at the, the last meeting. They took some of your comments and thoughts and uh, worked to uh, flush out more detail here. So uh, Mr. Snow is going to share with you a couple of the concepts now. How are we doing? Does this zoom out a little bit? There we go. That's what I want. Yep. The one that says zoom. Thanks. There we go. Okay. We'll get there. This is high tech you guys have here. How are we doing? So I think everyone has the packet. Yeah, so from last time, I thought we had some great comments. Um, so we've done some revisions to that. If you look at the first, first page there, we're really kind of showing this is kind of based on scheme C from last time that I think everyone kind of liked. We've got um, up on the north side, we've got this residential uh, building. It's like a 60, 60 to 70 unit building. It's probably th probably four stories, but it could be three. Um, it's got a little retail just on the first floor on the side here. You can see that kind of curve. Somebody asked for more curves in architecture, which I'm all for, by the way. But, um, but doing it in a way still that's um, going to be developer friendly. Uh, you've got... Um, down below, we've, we started to develop these kind of live work units. We started talking about it a little bit last time, and you know, there's a call for more specifics and what kind of businesses go there. And I think some of that won't be able to develop as part of this scheme, but starting to think about that. And it, what I found too, kind of looking around, is it's kind of a unique product where we're we're kind of going going forward with here, where these kind of separate. There's a lot of kind of joint together live work that's happening. It's all you know, it's happening all over the country now, um, but these kind of separate lots and i've even started putting property lines and trying to make it more real from an architectural standpoint like how much setback do you need and without having to make two hour firewalls and what's going to be affordable and what will work so that's starting to be reflected on the plan here but like i said it's 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 a unique product so 
the the look of that and and how 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 will you go forward and develop that i'm you know it'd be nice if it was a more urban feel and we'll talk a little more about that in a sec but and then this other corner we're just calling future development and this is what i what we came to with mike and dale just we're going to call this future development for now so really the what that becomes it really would be dependent on what's developed on the other two pieces of the site um and ultimately if those live work units are really successful maybe it's more live work maybe it's more retail i think it's it's probably good to have it open at this point and then we've got some options we'll for the center plaza we'll look, look at in just a minute as well on the side i've started putting again just talking about the the imagery on the right for this this from this first page um you know it would be really great if it's a nice urban scale a really nice human scale to it that's part of that um a nice urban feel you've got um and part of the site too is, you know, we talked about last time, you know, places for young families, uh, adaptable spaces, um, places that are going to support creative professionals. So we're trying to reflect that in the in, the, in this site plan, and you, you'll start to see that. If you go to the next page with me, you've got this is a couple of things. So one, I've got we did a uh, I did a layout of the parking ramp down below and what that could be based on the structure. And you can see kind of in a light outline if you look at it with the magnifying glass, you can see a pretty a nice outline underneath. But it really sits underneath the top of that structure. Sits underneath. You can see the columns of the structure coming down. It's got 135 spaces. It could be shrunk down to like 85 if you take out that last bay on this side here. Um, so, but I think the parking below can work nicely. Um, on the right, I've done a little blow up with the live work. So we've got some different things. And this is one idea of what we could do. These are basically 25 by 55 long units. And part of it is uh, that we've come up with is you've got a, each unit would have kind of a shared easement. You can see the property line down the middle here. But they'd have a spot for a parking, for a car, private parking. And the reason for that is really, so this, I'm calling this backspace garage or, or flex space in the back. So you've got kind of a studio in front, a stair to a second floor apartment, and then a garage, which could, which could be a traditional garage or it could be additional studio or workspace. And part of the idea is that, you know, this paver road or paved access road is also becomes kind of a shared flex space in the back where they can open up the garage, they can have, uh, uh, could do a show back there they could do whatever but it becomes a very adaptable space all around the units for those for those residents and and then there's a little patio space and that could also be more of an additional kind of more secure retail or whatever kind of space show space that, that they're, they're looking for um, and then just some ideas so that I found one if you look at this image one here on the on the corner this is what they're doing in um, uh, shoot I forget where <laughs> but it's a just looking at some what are some affordable options that could happen and granted like I said there's not a lot of what we're doing but looking at some different options that are actual live work developments that are being going up that are on the affordable side and how can we start to get that and get the urban look that we want and there's some ideas that I found that just might start to promote that idea so just some, some food for thought there if you go to turn to that third page so this is option one. We did like three options working with Rettler on the central plaza area. And the, they're all a variation of theme for how can we strengthen the fabric of downtown in a way that will promote business activity and a vibrant, um, and a vibrant environment. So on this option one, and, and you're looking at uh, different gathering spaces. So this is kind of a node scheme. You've got a dog park that would be fenced. You've got a play area. And then you can see the numbers really correspond. If you look at the, the numbers in black, like two, it looked like, what, what does that look like? Well, here's some ideas of what that could look like. Um, and you can see that kind of numbered for you. But you've got different gathering choices. You've got dog friendly. It's generational. And what does generational mean? We talked about that. And does it support young families? Can it support older people? It's, in my mind, part of that's so grandma wants to walk her young kid. There's a place for grandma to sit down while the young kid might play. So just one idea. There's others. Um, and also supports creative professionals. So how are we doing that? You know, what kind of spaces are we creating that we're going to also support the activity downtown? And it's so much such a great I, I, I area, as you know. You've got the everything going on at the Oxbow now. If you've been downtown and seen all that activities going there, you've got the farmers market, the library. So much great kind of a nexus there of stuff going on, and it becoming part of that. If you go to the next scheme, option two for the plaza. So you've got. This one is kind of more about flow through the site. So you've got, again, again variation on a theme, but you've got the green space, you've got a central flexible play area, 
a little do larger dog park or it could be green space, some, some covered park, bicycle parking, but really kind of interacting with and moving through the site on option two. And then some nice options, some nice images again on the side um, of what, what, the, what those spaces and the buildings can start to feel and look like. Last option three, this one really kind of creates more of a central flexible play area around the dog park and the green space. So it kind of becomes a more of a destination and isn't as much, although it does help really nicely flow through the site, but it's more about it as more of a destination location than, than kind of flow through the site. And some images there for that. Any comments or questions? Anybody? Mr. Kim? Thank you. Um, thanks for the presentation. I, I have to say I, I really appreciate the sure. quality of the presentation here. I'm trying to get a feel for the, like the dimensions of this the park area that we're talking about in the middle. Right. Now the, the little car there kind of helps, I guess. Right, to give it a little scale. If you look at it too, the, the little units, so these, um, the little over units are 25 by 55. So you've really got like a seven, like an 80 or 90 foot park on the side here. Um, yeah, a little, you know, we can add some dimensions on there, but. I'm just trying to think, so she said like destination on three, you know. Yeah. Yeah, well, you see where I'm going. I, if it's kind of small, I mean, it can't be bigger, right? Because it's on a block. Right. I mean, it's. Yeah. If, if I was living in one of those units, I probably wouldn't want the tiny park right behind me to be a destination. But I don't know that it will be given the size of it. So. Right. Um, but yeah. It's, so I think that answers my question. On the sure. Dimensions. Thanks. Thank you, Madam yes. Chair. Mr. Klinkhammer. Um, following up on the question that Dr. Kemp just asked, um, is this the open space, is this an essential component to the marketability of the uh, work live or live work areas and the residential component? Um, or or not, I guess. It could be. I mean, I, there's a lot of great case studies that suggest, you know, that uh, these. It's hard it, in this day and age to speak out against open space. So. You mean we um, would rather have something built there? Is that what you're well, saying, David? I guess I don't know that I would, but uh, how much uh, open space or park space do we need downtown? I mean, is there. That's why I asked the question, is it right. integral to the way this is marketed to have that? Well, I think, you know, Dave, what, just if, I may, if I may, one thing I love about this space, it's kind of a unique space for, it would be for downtown, because you don't have this kind of layered downtown kind of urban park right now, where, where you've got kind of businesses, you've got a lot of business activity, you've got some residential, you've got some retail activity, all kind of shared in this, in this space. So it's a very active, kind of vibrant space. Uh, you've got Phoenix, Phoenix Park with the farmer's market, but it's kind of a different, you know, that's more of a park. It's a very active park, but it's a park. Um, so this is, it's almost like a, I don't know what you call it, an urban, layered urban activity center. I don't, I don't know. It almost needs like a different word. Yeah, if I might follow up on that just a little bit. Um, assuming you've talked to developers, for instance, the building. We have, yeah. Okay, yeah. and they, that's something they like so yeah i mean you know i think this it was funny because this council wanted more curves and architecture they wanted square buildings and less architecture but <laughs> i think there's a happy place in between um but uh and i you know this is you know the curve really is just storefront on, on the front of this building you can see the columns out in front of that it's really a square with the curve down below you know and how how, how do we articulate that of course this is just a conceptual plan of course but I think you'll want some interest on the side rather than just a rectangle. There's at least certainly an opportunity for that. Mr. Klinkhammer, did you have another comment? Uh, no. Okay. Uh, Dr. Kerr? Thank you. Just quickly, I, I, despite my earlier comments, might have seemed to suggest otherwise. I, I really appreciate the space. I, you know, someone with kids, 
this there's not a lot of places downtown area for kids right. to just kind exactly. of be kids, right? And I imagine a lot of people living here are going to have kids, and I think they're going to appreciate some space. If you think of any other neighborhoods, think of like my neighborhood over here, or top of the hill. They all have neighborhood parks. Right. You know, if we're going to if we're going to make it this sort of intergenerational thing, then I think that's been a good model for the city. Have a lot of mm -hmm. community parks, and so this isn't quite a community park, but it's a, I think it's a good step in the right direction. Right. Yeah, thank you. I think sometimes what we're dealing with is uh, what you read is that millennials think very differently than, say, people my age and, and what they would want or the generation that will even follow them would want is some of the things that you're probably dealing with is uh, you're saying multi-generational, but uh, the majority of these will be by people who are uh, in that millennial age group or the, the millennials or whoever follows them. So that's part of what you're dealing with in, in trying to come up with a concept. I think so, but you know, it'd be really interesting to do a study on the, you know, the buildings downstairs that you know Jeff and Commonwealth, Commonwealth have. There's like those five residential buildings. It'd be really interesting to see the mix. I know some old, there are a bunch of older couples like Scott Rogers lives downtown uh, from the chamber. I know there's a bunch of people who love it down there, and I'd be really interesting to see like what is the mix down there and what would really end up being. I, in my mind, I think of a mix when I think of this space. I think of older. I think professionals, young and old. Um, uh, kind of a vibrant mixing, but uh, I could, I could be. Maybe it is just millennials. I, I'm really. It's. I, I think it's unclear at this point. Merely opinions. All right. Uh, I, I think you will, and I think the pricing is going to almost demand it. Right. Let me talk about the live work a little bit. Uh, you've shown it as two story. I think practically the realities of getting dining, kitchen, uh, two bedrooms, living area in a space is going to push you where many are going to have to be three-story to do that. And that's going to very quickly put you into a price point where I, I think it's going to be more uh, single proprietorship type entities uh, and those who can afford something that's going to be more expensive than, you know, affordable is in quotation marks there. I don't know what, what we're defining affordable is. But if we're moving to three stories, it, I cannot believe it won't push $300,000 very quickly. So you know, to me, that's, that's psychologists, that's uh, people who are uh, uh, making a living in some way, you know, computer designers, uh, mm -hmm. making a living online, uh, those sorts of things. Uh, you're not going to see, I think, as many of the, the artists that we're talking about just because it's just not going to be in a price point that they can afford, I think. And we've sort of seen that on the retail, too. I, I think the corollary is, is accurate. When you put new space up, the, the cost of that space is often at a rent that the smaller local uh, entities that, that we want. You think of like some of the stuff along the river? Yeah, exactly. Get, get, priced out of that very rapidly. So that's why some of the retail is empty Well, you know, some of the other uh, folks are being drawn here. So it's, it's just a hard mix, which is why I think you're wise to, to go slowly, you know, see, see what happens. This is new, and yeah. uh, I don't think there are a lot of examples where it's been done, and, and I think you're going to see a mix all over the place, truthfully, and, and it will sort itself out if it, if it works, hopefully, as intended. My only comment on the plaza, I, I think we're also getting a density here that is atypical for our community. And green space gives you sort of a, a, a place to pause, and it, it softens the architecture. It's going to soften the space. I think you're wise to include it. Uh, I, I just fear otherwise this is getting so dense. I think you need it. We're going yeah. gonna to destroy what's drawing people down here. And uh, so I, would, I think you're wise to include it. And I think it interacts well with the spaces around uh, Jamps building, too, and the parking ramp. So I think that uh, kind of becomes an extension of that. My only, question, oops, my only question on the green space is who owns it, who maintains exactly. it, exactly. who's yeah. responsible for it? Uh, is it? Is it the building? Uh, is it the city? Is it some sort of association for the block? Right. That will have to be sorted because uh, whoever owns it is going to control access to it. And be responsible for it. Right. So. 
I think in my mind's eye, I, think it, I see it as an association for the block, but that's, you know, that's a financial model that someone's got to develop. The other thing too, Jeff, thanks for your comments. You know, I think there's a really viable two story. Granted, it's for uh, you know, a couple or a single person, but there's a nice, I think, option for a two story. Now for a young family, right, there may not be enough space. Um, they're about uh, 2,700 a fee right now, two stories. So, but you're fitting a lot of program in there. You're also including the garage. And the garage, yeah, and I am including the garage, which is you know probably about uh, six, seven hundred of that. So, um, yeah, but there, I think there's a viable option with a, a bedroom or two, uh, a small kitchen space or a shared kitchen living that could work. But it's a good comment. Anybody else? Anybody from the public? Any comments? Okay, it was wonderful, beautiful presentation. Um, Mike, any action today, per se? No action today. What we'll, we'll, what we'll do with these is start um, testing it out, talking to people, getting mm -hmm. comments from potential uh, uh, businesses that might be interested, potential developers that would be interested in the, the bigger building, and then mm -hmm. uh, see what happens. Like Jeff says, go slow, but you know, get a lot of opinions. See what. Yeah, I think, um, that, I think that's wise, Mike, and, and be as flexible as you can be as you're getting input on it. And I think we can also um, ask a developer maybe to help us further define what a potential cost might be of mm -hmm. a, yeah. you know, one of those smaller units, and, and just kind of get a feel for ourselves what what we're t dealing with in terms of pricing and such. All right. Thanks. Thank you. On to number six, executive director's report. Michael. So this is um, a map of the, a portion of the cannery district. These two green lots are the lots that the city owned that eventually was to go, be traded for the park area in the cannery district. This is, the, this is Kessler Park, the bottom one, and this is what I guess we always call the old hockey bowl uh, for a better term, but it's, it's a vacant lot up there. Um, as uh, we in uh, staff, we have a development team that meets every two weeks and we talked about sites uh, WIDA, Wisconsin Housing and Economic Development Authority, has another round of uh, applications coming up. So we've been getting a lot of um, workforce housing type of inquiries from developers. And when we met as a staff, we thought the only lot that we had that is could conceivably maybe meet the deadline of uh, December would be this lot here. Um, we, in fact, had a developer in uh, yesterday that uh, toured it and looked at it, and they're going to um, get back to me on whether they think we can put all this together by a December deadline or should we wait for a, a year. But where I'm going with all this is that uh, eventually the city would have to transfer this over to the RDA uh, so that you would uh, then entertain the uh, potential developments. So. Um, just kind of gearing you up for it, uh, first step would actually be to go to council and uh, ask them if they uh, wanted to do that. But uh, just so you're, you're in the loop of uh, the discussions that are going on at our, our development team, um, that would be the first step. Eventually, when the park is in, then we would also uh, envision doing the same thing with the, uh, the Kessler Park area there. So uh, right now, uh, it would also have to be rezoned. So that, that's some of the analysis that has to do with can this happen in the timing for a December submittal or not. We've had several developers uh, in over the last couple of months because of that weeded uh, application date. So they've been looking around for a lot of them want to do projects in Eau Claire. It's just finding a site that uh, is fitting for it. Um, as we mentioned before, under the earlier discussion uh, regarding the cannery district here, so as we, as we showed the outlot here, 
we will have to do the same thing up here as the trail goes further. So again, it be coming back to you with that discussion about uh, turning over that por um, uh, portion of the land to the city so that they could uh, get the park going. Dave, did you have any updates on uh, putting that in and anything you want to add to this part of my report? I was just going to add that we're hopefully going to, going to have a trail uh, advertiser bid this week and then construction in September, October. Okay. Michael, would you like to repeat that or have Dave come up? Dave, could you Thank come up? Thank you. Please? I was just going to say for the uh, the cannery trail that goes along and connects up to the high bridge, uh, we're hoping to have that advertised for bid this week and then um, hopefully awarded by council in early September and then construction in September and October on that on that trail. The outlot one for the CSM uh, transfers, you know, is in this area. And then as Mike had mentioned before, we will be through uh, to extend that outlot hopefully in September. So we have the the area for the trail dedicated over the city uh, when it's constructed. Any questions on that? Okay, thanks. Just a couple other things while we're on the cannery district. Um, you had authorized us to um, get environmentals on the properties that uh, Jack Kaiser owned. Uh, those came back good, no indication that we would need to do a phase two on that. And so um, now our next step would be to um, get appraisals on those properties. And then um, the city, through their CIP, is putting a million dollars into that for the uh, acquisition and such. So potentially in 2018, we can uh, acquire those properties. Madam Chair. Yes, Mr. Klinkhammer. Uh, question of Mr. Schott. If uh, Would the value of those two properties that you first talked about, the hockey uh, and Kessler Park, uh, would the value of those properties be affected in any material manner, way, upwards, presumably, uh, <laughs> by waiting until the public space was more fully developed? Or is the impact of what we're going to be doing across that road already impacting that property? That, that's a good question. Uh, we'd have to see what the appraisals show, but, but that has happened to us in the past where you, know, you start um, talking about your plans, you, you have them, and then sometimes the appraisers seem to uh, already give more value to that. Um, it's worked against us too, where um, uh, properties we were trying to buy all of a sudden went higher. Um, they're not supposed to do that, but um, it conceivably could happen the other way too, where ours could get more valuable, but they're probably already aware of the plans and the efforts that are uh, going into this and, and the, you know, the vision material that we've put together. Um, in terms of affordable housing, you, um, uh, the, the taxable portion is based on income levels and stuff there, so you don't always get the, uh, the highest taxable um, that you could if it was a non-workforce housing type project. Um, but when we did our uh, listening sessions and such, uh, Everybody said that uh, multiple types of housing, diverse housing, were all acceptable for this area. Uh, everything from low income to market rate to elderly to condos uh, were all things that could people could conceive in that area, and uh, anywhere from two to four story buildings in the area. Thank you. Oh, well not interested in gentrification that Riverbank's neighborhood over there. Um, but I guess the bottom line, do you think we're, uh, we would be better served to wait or not? Uh, in the um, I'm a firm believer in activity and that moving forward with projects um, creates even more interest and more activity. Um, this is a, a fairly small portion 
of the whole 30 acres that uh, that we have. I'm not sure it can even happen this fast. I, it may be a mute point that uh, we just can't pull it together that fast with the transfer and the rezonings. And uh, typically developers, um, because of the point system for weed applications, have to have a city uh, financial commitment to it. So we'd have to work through that. So from now until December makes it seem like that might be tight. So we may be waiting a full year anyway. So, you know, what you're suggesting will could conceivably happen anyway. That Any other questions? I don't have a question, but I do want to make uh, one statement. In the last three months, I've had probably about six or eight people come through Eau Claire who used to live here 30 or 40 years ago. Uh, some of them were in management with WEAU-TV and, and our radio stations. And they wanted me to pass along the one that I was on the air that they just could not believe what we've accomplished in the last few years. And for some people who haven't been here for a long time, it was like they entered a different world and they wanted us to pass along to the RDA and the city and people in Altoona, how impressed they were with what we've accomplished so far. Here, here. Thank you. If not, well, anything else, we'll move on to number seven, announcements and correspondence. Um, Michael, do you have a date for the next meeting, first uh, of all? I can't. I think it's early again. Um, my calendar. Mr. DeRosa usually has that right at his fingertips. It is my the, coming in without my calendar. It is the 20th not. of September. September 20. Thank you. Anything else, Mike? Not for me. Announcements, correspondence. I can't make Mr. the 20th. Oh. I'll just say that right now. Okay. Thank you. If nothing else, we'll call this meeting adjourned. Thank you. This program was brought to you by a cooperation between NewsWorks and the City of Eau Claire. A transcript of this meeting is available for the hearing impaired. It will be available within seven days of this telecast. Call 715-839-4912 or TDD 715-839-1689 or write Eau Claire City Clerk, P.O. Box 5148, Eau Claire, Wisconsin, 54702-5148. NewsWorks is made possible by continuing community support. If you would like to volunteer or make a donation, please contact us via phone at 